Good morning, and uh, it's very early in the morning here uh, in Trujillo, where I was leaving it. It was actually before sunrise. Stayed in a sort of a secured building, sort of a weird sort of place um, in Trujillo, uh, Trujillo. Um, and uh, I don't know, uh, there's a few little families there and breakfast and all that was pretty good and all that sort of stuff, but just a weird vibe to the place. You know, I, I got up at about 4 a.m. and um, was just sitting on the balcony just reading some emails and doing some work. And uh, I just looked down and this guy was just sitting in a chair staring at me like a security guy. He was like facing me. It was just really weird. And uh, I just stared back at him and then sort of put my hands out, you know, what's, what's up, mate? And uh, he just turned the chair around and then just started walking around the thing again. It was just weird. So anyway, um, so my goal today was to get um, to get to um, to get to Lima, um, and and uh, and that was going to be my launching pad to get it to go to go inland again and up in the, into the Andes. So I had about 600 kilometres to do. Um, around about 400 miles and I knew it was going to take me about about eight hours all up uh, on the road and with with the brakes that I normally have like the two hour brakes uh, I normally have I would be um, probably take around about 10 hours so I was hoping to arrive uh, in Lima where I booked an Airbnb so whenever I travel and um, and I'm going to stay somewhere for more than two or three days. I always um, try to get an Airbnb uh, if I can. Um, the reason for that is uh, Airbnb for a, for a, a traveller it just is so much better than hotels. Uh, you get the run of the house. Um, these are the things I look for, especially in warmer climates. Um, I don't like being inside um, in hot and hot apartments and having the air conditioning on. So I'd rather be warm and be sitting outside um, and it being warm outside and having a nice breeze and that at night so I can do some work because I don't like sitting inside working when I'm traveling. So these are the things I look for when I when I get an Airbnb. I look I look to make sure they have Wi-Fi. So in my settings, I have Wi-Fi. Um, you can't search for a balcony, unfortunately. Uh, Wi-Fi, um, uh, secure parking um, and then basically I sort of zero in on a certain part of town so I do a bit of research so if you typed in something like best parts uh, best uh, areas of Lima Peru to stay you'll have TripAdvisor and all these sites where people have made comments so I did a bit of research on that and look for a nicer area uh, in uh, in Lima and um, I found a really nice apartment with a little balcony um, so you just searching through the photos, you see the ones with balconies, Wi-Fi, secure parking, um, and if it's, if you're going to a hot place, you still have to have air conditioning because it's miserable otherwise. Um, yeah, and you know the thing about having an Airbnb, if you if you did a price check for comparing an Airbnb at the same style, which is you know three to four stars, you're probably paying half what you pay in a hotel, um, and and then with the Wi-Fi, I always look through the comments to see if someone said something about the Wi-Fi. I always message the 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 person before I book to say, look, it's, uh, I've got a template in Google Keep where I do all my notes, and I just copy and paste it from there, saying, look, I'm traveling, and I just change a bit of text in it. Traveling to your city, I need to have a good Wi-Fi. It says that you've got uh, high-speed internet. Um, please confirm that that is the case. Uh, and by doing, because I need to work and I can't work unless I have a decent Wi-Fi. So that gives me a get out. So then if, if I get there and the Wi-Fi is not working or, I, or there's big issues with Wi-Fi, I can basically ask, uh, I can make some complaints to them and then make a complaint to Airbnb and Airbnb will offer me a refund. I'd have to, I'd have to leave, but Airbnb will offer me a refund. So it gives me a get out each time. So as an example, if you booked a hotel and they say, oh, we've got good Wi-Fi, 
um, when I put the note in for the booking, um, like on Expedia, it says high speed internet. Now, high speed internet by its term should be 25 megabytes a second or greater, and it's a lie throughout the hotel industry. Uh, and what I always find with the hotels is I've got a, a, uh, an app on my phone that I always test straight away and it tells me what the download and upload speed is and if the upload speed is the same as the download speed you know the hotel's throttling the internet because that just doesn't work that way you know if, if you get a broadband internet connection you might get 25 megabytes down and 5 megabytes upload so it's always good to check and especially if you've got to do work and i'm staying in lima for four or five days um because i've got work to do and um, so this is, I'm just going to get, get off that subject for a sec, but this is, uh, this is what you were driving through. It was just barren deserts and the wind just gushing across the roads. Um, it, was, it was tough, but it was going to be tougher for me in the future, but it was also quite beautiful, you know. So a couple of, I did a couple of little road side trips to, to the beach. I went for a swim here. There were some fishing boats out on the water and... Uh, All very cool, need a shave. But this was like, the, the, a lot of the driving was on these split highways, which I don't like. Uh, it's just it's just pounding and getting uh, getting miles under the belt. But there were, basically I followed the coast all the way down to, to Lima. So I was probably anywhere from one to five kilometers in, inland, the highway stretches from there. It's quite pretty and there's a lot to see. Um, but it's all very similar. Um, you get you get to go through a few little towns and stuff like that. But anyway, getting back to the Airbnb, the, on, on this trip, I probably had 50% of places where the internet just wasn't acceptable. You know, and it really frustrated me. And the further south I got, the worse it got. The best internet I got was in Santiago in Chile. And the thing is, hotels always make excuses. Oh, you know, um, when I was in, uh, when I was in uni, I got to the hotel, I'd had a really long day of riding and really tired. And I got to the hotel, the internet was down. And this is a five star hotel, internet was down. Um, and then when I went to have a shower, there was no hot water, you know, and just stuff like this. And, that, and I asked the person on the front desk, you know, you, you say that you have high speed internet. And then they say, yeah, but the internet comes from La Paz. And I said, what does that mean? What are you telling me? That, you know, that they send it via packages, you know, like in the mail? Like, uh, so it's basically disarming any blame from themselves. Now, if you run a hotel and your hotel is 100% tourist, which this one was, then all the tourists want to use the, the internet, you know, and, they, and so having no internet. And then, you know, the hotel that I stayed in the uni was pretty much exclusively marketed towards Chinese and Japanese tourists, and that's fine. Um, and all of them have, you know, their friggin' cameras happy, and you know, the, the, all the people that were there are taking photos of friggin' everything. And they don't, that, half, half the time the Wi Fi was out. So basically, um, you know, and, and no responsibility. And then with the hot water, the, the girl says, oh, it happens from time to time. What does that mean? You know, $200, $150 a night hotel. And you know, and that, that hotel too in, in Uni, and I'll talk about it when I do that video. There was about four or five, five star, four and a half, five star hotels on this road. This was a, it was a salt hotel. So it was made of salt, it was very pretty, good location. Um, and you know, just everything that they did was just terrible. And so as an example, where they said I parked my bike was in a friggin' mud patch. And I said, I'm not parking my bike there. I'm never gonna get out, you know? And, and they said, oh, well, you can't park it where the cars are. I said, I'm going to. So I just parked it where the cars are. And then the manager came and saw me. I said, look, well, he goes, oh, okay, no worries. You know, but just, just the, fir the, the first instance I got there, four and a half star hotel, no one came to help me out. This is just one of the little side tracks I went on. And again, if you get the road maps, you can see these. And this was only about four or five kilometer, uh, four or five kilometers, uh, a few miles of a track between the two roads as it swept around and did a sort of did a U around a mountain. 
Um, it was technically a road, but it wasn't really a road. Um, just a couple of locals there and end up stopping on the side of the road. But yeah, so you just get that sort of stuff happening. It's really frustrating. And and so with with uh, um, with Wi-Fi, nearly and, and Airbnb, nearly any time I had any issues, there was, someone was there to help. You know, and I always got better Wi-Fi at, Air, at Airbnb. As long as the Airbnb isn't remote, like it's near the city, uh, you're usually going to be fine with that. Um, and basically, the, 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 how you work with an Airbnb is you, you get there, you unpack your bike, I plug in all my devices, charge them up, then I get back on the bike and I go and do a bit of shopping. If I'm staying for three or four days, I'll buy some cereal, some milk, you know, some eggs, I, you know, just, you know, all, any of the basics, you know, just so that I've got something to get into my stomach before I go out for the day um, and, and tour around. Um, so yeah, so it's just it's just about being vigilant. You know, I'll keep talking about about in the different videos. I'll I'll talk about uh, some of the things that I, I found out along the way. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're going to be doing budget stuff, you'll find that hostels um, hostels will always have decent Wi-Fi or at least a, a stable connection because they survive on that. Um, I was in, when I was uh, I camped one night in. Uh, in uh, Colombia, and um, and it was Colombia anyway, wherever it was. But it was a it was a pretty remote sort of place, and it was a camp. camp you know, you paid for it, like you paid like five dollars. And the Wi-Fi there was probably fifty to seventy meters away from the office. And the Wi-Fi there was high speed, like fifty megabytes a second download, and it was packed with people. There was people everywhere camping. And there was some cabins as well. Um, now, I went down the road and I looked at, uh, I went past about another three or four campgrounds and they were all quarter full. Now, so obviously, and when I, when I was doing research, everyone was saying Wi-Fi was amazing. And that business, it might, might cost them maybe an extra $500,000 a year to have that, but they probably make 30, 20, $30,000 a year out of it. And, and when when people say, oh, the Wi-Fi is not very good here and stuff like that, I think, why? Why? It's so easy. You know, it costs you maybe, maximum it would cost would be $100 a month for, for a, a really good connection. Maybe $200 a month, depending, I don't know what they charge uh, customers for the highest speed, but it wouldn't be that expensive, you know? Uh, it wouldn't be more expensive than the US, and it, even if it was as expensive, it's still a good business uh, business proposition because everybody leaves comments. So if you've got a decent place with really good Wi-Fi, people will say the Wi-Fi was amazing. And then other people will go and book there. It just makes no sense. It's the business that they're in. Uh, and hotels are the biggest culprits where they they, they throttle the internet and, they, um, and then they try and charge you extra for what is essentially not even high-speed internet. They call it high-speed and, oh, you can watch videos. High-speed internet, Basic internet, you should be able to watch a YouTube video. I mean, it's just so ridiculous. And and the thing about it is, hotel associations everywhere are all, the, because they pay taxes to the government and they've got a right to be heard um, with it. And, 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 in, and what's gonna happen is all Airbnb are gonna have to pay taxes to the government as well. You know, to, uh, hotel taxes or whatever. And that's fine. The government needs to raise money to pay for the services. But what happens is the Hotels Association try to get Airbnb banned in every city. And that's just not gonna happen because people need it. And people have been doing this for, for centuries, for over a century where people can come and stay in their house and they charge a small fee to make ends meet, you know? So any government that, that bans Airbnb is working 100% against their citizens. And you can say, you can, they make, they look for every excuse they can think of, oh, it, it, it pushes up rents. Well, so what? That's the market. That's what the market does. You know, rent, rentals in, in places are a problem. I, I get that. But it's, it's more to do with the housing prices where people are forced to find other source of income because in most countries, 
it's becoming unattainable for young people to buy homes. So the government's doing that, it's just such a, a crappy thing. I mean, New York City, for instance, banned Airbnb. New York City was built on people staying in other people's places. You know, the Italians, the Irish, um, you know, after the Second World War and the First World War, when they had, you know, they, they opened themselves up to all different nationalities coming to live in America, um, and, and and people and how people made money and how people saved money was to stay in other people's houses and families and, and their cousins and all that sort of stuff. You had four or five families staying in the house. So the excuse is now, well, well, well it's, it's dangerous. Well, shut up. You know, just any time a politician does that, you know they're getting money from the, from the hotel associations. And the hotel associations have a right to have a gripe, but uh, yeah, anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop ranting about that, but it just really annoys me where, you know, they create rules that are basically against their citizens and, uh, and basically for, their, for the people that raise money for them. And um, it's just a shit way of running, running, running cities, running states, running countries, you know. Um, anyway, so the, my reason for staying four or five days in, in uh, Lima was pretty much really 100% to do with work. There wasn't a huge amount I wanted to see in Lima. There's the historic area, which is very nice, but it's just, uh, you know, it's a few hours and that's it. Uh, there's also uh, a very nice beachfront and waterfront area. Uh, they love their beaches. The funny thing about it is, is that nearly all over the country, though, um, you have um, pretty much countrywide, you have uh, where all these beaches are, they're just, they're, no one lives near them. Yeah, so as you're driving through the countries, you're seeing people, um, you're seeing just, yeah, yeah, but yeah, land just empty right near the oceans, which is really strange. I mean, it's a lot of sand and dirt and that. So, so this is just coming through another town and, and uh, after being in the sand for, for that long. And, and if you're going to be riding in the sand, definitely have your visor down. I used to have a little bit of an opening at the bottom of my visor, maybe half an inch, just to let some air in. I used to, I used to like that. Um, when it's raining, you obviously can't do that uh, anywhere near as much, depending on how strong it's raining. Uh, and also a neck, uh, a neck scarf, um, just because of particles that are continually bombarding you from sand. Um, and a good idea is to. You know, if you get to a hotel or, or a car park or wherever you can, if you can get a little bit of a hose and just give your bike a bit of a hose down and, you know, just give it a good clean just in case there's sand and all that trapped in little crevices. Um, I ended up getting, you know, when, whenever I went to a city, maybe $5, sometimes I just paid more because I paid a tip to the guy doing it. I met the, this couple here um, were from... Uh, were from Colombia and they were they'd been riding uh, down to um, they're going to Machu Picchu and then back up again. They're pretty cool. They packed their bike pretty pretty heavy, um, and we stopped off and had a little bit of a chat. Whenever I meet people, see this video, we're stopping off here. So whenever you meet people, that's what you you're always doing. You know, you you don't sort of just ride on. Most most of the time, you stop and say hello and you know find out a little bit about them and. Stuff like that, yeah. They were really, they were really cool. All, all smiles, and they were just telling me where they were going and and where I was going and where I was from. And then I just, I think I just pointed at my at my bike with the kangaroo because I've got a kangaroo on it. That's it. When everyone asks you where you're from, you just point to the kangaroo, and they go, Ah, kangaroo! And then they do a little hopping thing sometimes too. Uh, Everyone, everyone sort of liked my bike. They gave me a little card and I followed them on Instagram. People give you stickers as well. A lot of, a lot of bikers think, oh, okay, we'll take stickers, but I mean, who's gonna put someone else's sticker? I mean, I would have ended up with 50 stickers of other bikers on my, on my bike. But I ended up going ahead of them and then I, I, because I stopped so often, they just kept coming past me. They were, only, they were going pretty slow, but because I stop a lot more than what most people do, um, as I've said in previous videos, I stop. I stop uh, once uh, when I'm doing off-roading. I stop more than once an hour. 
um, just have a bit of a break and just get everything back together again. On longer trips like this, once every two hours. Um, so I'll stop for uh, I'll stop for um, for about 15 to 20 minutes once every two hours, and then obviously a fuel stop. But I, I don't I don't stop very rarely. Uh, the only time I stopped at gas stations for to rest and, and relax was on the way back from uh, from from uh, uh, Ushuaia back to Buenos Aires because it was three and a half thousand kilometres of just boring roads. There was nowhere to stop really. Um, probably the last part of my trip, which is sad, is that probably the it wasn't. It was just hard work, you know. Every day, just trying to pound out as many miles as you can just to get to Buenos Aires because there's really nothing in between. Um, the first the first four or five hours getting, you know, you've got to cross a couple of borders, getting out of Ushuaia, uh, and that was nice. The, the ride out of Ushuaia was pretty, but um, once you once you got across the, all the borders, it was, it was roads like this, a lot rougher than this though, and just nothing either way. Um, so it became, uh, pretty pretty boring sort of trip um, but yeah so I mean you know um, as far as gas and, and the quality of gas uh, the gas you, you just always buy the highest quality uh, gas you can get you know usually you can get up to 98 um, uh, but most of the time 92 94 which is similar to the US there's a little shot um, Sorry about that. <laughs> Those sort of shots I mentioned in a previous video, they're a setup shot. So the back of my bike I had, behind me I had a bag, and then on top of that bag, I had um, I had my GoPro uh, stick. So every now and then I'd stop to get, I call them hero shots from the Blackadder. Uh, movie where you put your your groin, you put your legs apart and you and your groin out, point it out. If you ever watch Blackadder, it's a British comedy series it's from the 80s. It's fantastic. Um, uh, but showing trying to trying to teach the bridge the Prince Regent how to stand properly when he's addressing people. Um, so yeah, so I, I'd have that out. And the, the other reason I had that bag behind me was 100% for resting my backpack on. I could have fit, fitted everything that was in that bag behind me on the uh, inside the cases or in the bags on, the, on my cases, but I I, um, I didn't because I wanted to have a little bag behind me where I could rest my backpack so my shoulders weren't carrying the weight of the backpack. So I just sit the backpack on it and it was you know, really nice. And in my backpack, I've got, I've got my water uh, and I've got a little tube that runs to, just to my left shoulder. Um, the other thing I have, and it's not 100% necessary, but on my on my uh, uh, jacket I have a, a spot messenger, a spot tracker, and and that basically pay $300 a year for it, and no matter where you are in the world, they'll send emergency responses to you if if you ever get into trouble. I also had one in my pants, uh, in my pants inside the pant. Um, and basically I taught myself, just in case, but I taught myself how to operate it and do an SOS um, without actually um, taking the device out. Uh, it, took, it took a while, I guarantee you. I kept having to, because you've got to flip a, little, a flip a little thing, so I had to be able to do that, learn how to do that from outside my pants, flip the, the little switch on it, flip it up, and then be able to press the button. So this is here. I am actually looking for somewhere to um, to uh, look, looking for a, a shortcut because I, I go back on that highway out there. Uh, but I was looking for a shortcut. I ended up parking up here. That's where I shot that video on the GoPro. But I ended up parking up here, thinking, okay, can I get a, a shortcut? But I couldn't. I couldn't find anything. So there's one of the towns, like a really hazy, dusty sort of place because of the wind. Um, but there's a, a little city down to the right hand side. It's quite a big city actually, but it reminds me of, um, of when I was in Iran and Iraq, and, and when I was in Iran, sorry, and uh, the sort of 
towns you sort of see on the roads. Very, everything's very beige. Uh, but um, yeah, I think in a, in, a, in a few of the videos you'll see all the wind blowing the sand across the road. So this is now coming into Lima, um, and uh, there's the beaches on the right hand side. I had to go up on the mountain on the left hand side to where I was staying, uh, which is a, a really nice place. But um, <clears throat> I met a couple of idiots on the road, a couple of motorbike rider idiots that were just being heroes. All they were doing was driving up and down this boulevard. And I sort of, I didn't get into an argument with a guy. I just laughed at him. He, he just, you know, he's just standing there, and he got a bit annoyed with me because he's just revving his Harley, you know, like. People who do that just freaking, it just annoys me so much because the, the, I mean, number one, your, your bike obviously is either so crap that you've got to keep the revs up to keep it running or you're just trying to be a hero and it's usually the latter. So not, not many things annoy me, but I mean, I just laugh at that. I just think they're losers, you know, uh, trying to get attention, you know, most Harleys are most. There's some really nice Harleys, and they're beautiful bikes, but I, they're pretty old technology. Um, but they're, um, you know, you're paying you're paying a premium just for the brand name, which which is just a fun. I mean, pe who, people get tattoos with Harley Davidson on them. I mean, it's not like the Harley Davidson are rare bikes or anything like that. There's something something different about you. Um, it's just. Um, it's just a weird thing that people do. And so this is along the beach. Um, I mean, you don't get a Toyota. Or, or some people probably get KTM tattoos, I don't know. It's a, it's a little bit weird. And all that stuff is a bit weird as far as I can see. I mean, if I was gonna get a, a motorbike, like a cruiser type bike or anything like that, I wouldn't get a Harley. I'd get. I'd be looking at something like a, a Triumph or a uh, Suzuki or something like that. Honda. Um, yeah, they did, uh, you know, I just every everybody's got a Harley. I mean, it's it just doesn't really mean anything to me. This is this this is one of these freaking idiots on a gangbangers. They don't last long. Um, just weaving in and out of traffic. I, for the most part, I mean, when I'm on my way and stuff like that, I'll do a bit of lane splitting and, and stuff like that. But most of the time, I just think, I'm going to get there. Who cares? You know, uh, In Miami, I do a bit of lane splitting, but I, I, I don't particularly like doing it when cars are moving. I, I, I just don't think it's safe. The, the number one reason why I don't think it's safe is because everybody's on their friggin' mobile phone. And you don't know how many times, like there was a girl the other day, I was riding back into Miami Beach and and I was uh, I was lane splitting. Um, the, the cars were going really, really slowly. And um, this car was just drifting into the other lane about, it, was, it went from about six feet between the cars to about two feet. And I just bit my horn and the girl waved and, uh, and she got out of the way. And then I just looked down and She's like looking at her phone. I said, get off the friggin' phone before you kill somebody. And they just laughed. But honestly, it's probably, today in, in, in this day and age, it's probably one of the things that you look out for when you're riding a bike. You know, when you see a car in front of you, you, you just get a, you get a feeling about cars. You know, that they haven't seen you, that they're not looking, that they're on their mobile phone, especially when it's a little bit dark, you can see the screen lighting up, you know. Um, and it's just, all it is, is just 100% dangerous. Uh, people think, oh, well, you know, it won't happen to me, but they, you know, they're just potential killers as far as I'm concerned. And especially when you see women doing it, or men, in a car with kids in it, you know, like you think, what, what is so freaking important that you need? And, and hand, hands-free is safer. It's not a magnet, a, a, a lot safer, but it is, a, well, it is a lot safer, but it's not um, safe either. Because the you know the studies have shown that your part of your brain you use to um, the part of the brain you use for um, 
for for uh, for when you're navigating driving a car is the same part of the brain you're using for when you're ch talking and stuff like that. You know, so the same parts that apparently light up. Um, but these days with hands-free, I mean, on my motorbike, I can send a WhatsApp message, hands-free, voice message, Android Auto. I can uh, text, send a text message, Android Auto. It's always rough, but it gets, usually gets the, the message across that I need to get across. I can answer phone calls, all from my helmet, you know? So it's all pretty lame, the, the, the excuses that they make, uh, the people, you know, if you ever ask them why do they have to, uh, use their phone, they'll just say, oh, I had to get a message, somebody was telling me they were meeting me. Freaking. Yeah, anyway. Um, so yeah, so Lima was quite pretty. I went, I, I did about two two or three rides. I was trying to get to a to a shop um, in there, but they were closed. There was some sort of long weekend uh, going on here as well. So they were closed um, at that time that I wanted to, uh, to get in, but um, yeah, I basically had about, I was about one kilometre away. I had to go up and left or up and right up here from my destination. But um, Lima's a, a nice city, but yeah, just another city. I, I never really, there's not many cities I've been to. There's some in Italy and, and uh, in Europe that are fantastic, but there's not many cities I've been to that I think much of them, you know. Um, the, the best part of Peru is outside of the cities. The best part of Colombia is outside the cities. The best part of everywhere um, are outside the So this is going back the other way, only because I made a mistake and uh, and the only way I could get to where I was going, I just realized that that was what I'd done. I had to go back and then up on the right, up to up another thing on the right hand side. And uh, yeah, I stopped off on the side of the road to message the lady that I was uh, that I was close, uh, ten minutes away, and uh, just so that I could get, uh, so that she'd be waiting for me. Um, and I was able to park securely underneath the building. Uh, the apartment was nice, nothing amazing, but nice, you know. And uh, yeah, I think the next videos are of me just doing a little bit of a tour around the old town. This was actually early the next day. That's like the, the main square, government buildings, uh, palace and stuff like that, the big church. A lot of, lot of beautiful churches in, in South America. A lot of old, old churches, even in some of the small towns. Um, and I always love it, you know, there's two things I love about uh, the poorer countries, is the way people dress to go to school Kids are just impeccably dressed, even from living in mud huts, they've got really white shirt, they just look 100% perfect. And then people who are going to church and, and stuff like that, Not I'm not, I'm not a religious person or spiritual person at all, um, but um, I do admire the, the respect that they, they give to to what they believe in and, and stuff like that. And uh, you know, you're seeing men in, like in Miami Beach, you'll see men in three-piece suits, uh, <laughs> In the, in the ridiculous heat. I don't know why I'm trying to get a photo there, but I obviously saw something I liked. So that visor there, that comes off whenever I'm in the wind, the sun visor at the, at the top. Um, chewing gum. It's a little bit more of a slower look around the the old part of town quite pretty it was a little bit damp there was this was really in the early in the morning the next day I think I ended up getting about three or four traffic lights here taxi drivers don't really care about you either. So I did a bit of a scoot around around the old town. I had some uh, lunch in a Market Street Mall, um, or breakfast, sorry, at a Market Street Mall. Then I went and got some supplies. 
Oh, quite nice. Police are usually pretty good if you want to park, if you wanted to go up onto the pavement there, they might come over and just chat with you. But um, they'll, they'll, they'll usually give you a bit of a leeway. Some of them will just straight away say, no, 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 you know. Um, but, yeah. And I think the next video is just me closing out um, a ride, uh, heading back to my apartment. I was about 20 minutes from the from the uh, from the old part of town. Turning the video around. So there you go. This is a little bit of a ride back out of the old that old town back to where my apartment was. Probably about 15, 20 minutes maybe. Uh, the old part of town is a little bit outside of the new part of town. Just highways and stuff like that. Again, in the cities, you're going to really have to be careful with your Google Maps, just to make sure that uh, that you uh, that you that you take your time around the city because some of the one-way streets aren't marked. In the big cities like this, usually it's pretty accurate. But again, with some one ways that don't work and then they have roads that basically you, you get stuck in a lane and you can't get out of that lane because they have bollards along the side of the road or or like a little split, a split so you can't. So if you make the wrong turn, you basically got to go all the way around again if you get into the wrong lane. So it's just about concentrating. And then the final video uh, of Lima was I just did a little video from the balcony where I was staying and uh, did a bit of a, a, a sunset video. I didn't have that great of views. It was just—it was a nice area of town, but uh, it was all pretty, all pretty basic. So yeah, this is the little fast, little time lapse video of of um, of the balcony. Down down below there was restaurants and cafes, and on the left hand side of me there was a, a shopping centre and there was a subway and stuff like that. I ended up having a subway because I was freaking starving one night. I'm not a big fan of them anyway. But anyway, guys, questions and comments below. Thank you.